everybody, and welcome back to the Dowie Talks Expert Series. We have something a little bit different for you in today's episode. Uh, for one, this is our first in-person interview. And for another, we have a little bit uh, different kind of guest today. Uh, as many of you who regularly follow this channel know, Dowie is a nonprofit organization that was founded by Master Ha Yang as a way of making connections between different teachers from different styles and to build bridges in the martial arts and internal arts community. Um, because Master Yang has his own YouTube channel and his own teaching platform, and because he never wanted Dowie to be about himself, even though the other members of the team wanted to interview him and were interested in having, having him on the program, he consistently declined over the last couple of years. And uh, luckily for everybody, myself and some of Master Yang's students were eventually able to convince him to grant us an interview so that we could gain some access into his unique background in Xingyi, Bagua, and Tai Chi, because he has a uh, very unique insight into these different arts and an interesting training history as well. So with, uh, with his permission, I traveled to Montreal, Canada recently, and I was able to spend a few days with Master Yang um, training and talking and drinking many, many cups of excellent tea and the result is what you're going to see today, which is a fairly decent run of time for an interview. We, our interviews normally run about an hour, and this one I think is about two hours long. And the good news is, is this is probably going to be the first of a few of these types of interviews. So if you like this content, please let us know in the comments section. And of course, yeah, hit like and subscribe. I hope you enjoy this interview with Master Hai Yang. Thanks. Okay, Master Yang. So... In, in one of your videos on your channel, you talked about uh, your grandfather at length, told your story about your relationship with your grandfather and how when you were growing up in Tianjin, you had access to many different teachers. Could you talk a little bit about the different teachers that you had and their styles of teaching? Okay. Um, when I was in, 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 a child in, in Tianjin, that time, I believe that was one of the golden age of uh, traditional martial art practice back then. When we look back at history, uh, for the last uh, couple of centuries, there are few, I can say there are three golden age of uh, Chinese martial art development, especially to the internal styles. The first one around 1910 to 1930s, about two or three decades at that time, which is uh, just the time when the Qing Dynasty ended. And then the Republican time started. Around that time, m martial artists tried to Re revitalize the national spirit through promoting and the practice of uh, martial art. It was a great time for a lot of uh, martial artists to create new styles, new system, new practice method with the uh, systematic way and an uh, open-minded attitude, meaning that they borrowed even a lot of uh, non-Chinese practice, uh, this kind of uh, concept. Um, which will be integrated into Chinese practice. It lasts about two or three decades. And then the second time, I believe, should be around 1950s to 1960s, just before the, the, the government um, created the modern Wushu practice. They tried to invite the traditional martial artists to create, to organize uh, the, those traditional practice and uh, promote them in the national and even tried at the international level. Then followed, followed, followed with this time is the Cultural Revolution, which started 1966 to 1976, around the 10 years time. During this time, most of traditional practice had been with, uh, not been promoted and it only had been practiced at, at the individual level without uh, uh, organized uh, practice or teaching. But some style like Tai Chi uh, even thrived during that time, meaning that a lot of great practice during the Cultural Revolution were created and promoted since a lot of uh, uh, Communist Party leaders like Mao Zedong and those people, they liked Tai Chi a lot. And then the third and uh, the latest uh, the golden age of the Chinese martial art in, in the traditional practice is around 1980s to 1990s. And the, around that time, the, after the end of the Cultural Revolution, Chinese people realized that they need to have uh, some practice 
not only physically but also spiritually, socially to integrate people together uh, to pursuit of uh, uh, well-being, so social well-being at the collective level and societal level and the individual level. That time, uh, government really made a lot of effort to to research to promote uh, traditional practice, uh, but later on was uh, replaced by the the over popularity of uh, qigong practice, which is started from 1980s to 1990s and around the before 2000 around that time. So, so I experienced, I believe, uh, at least the last two golden age of the Chinese martial art practice. So back in Tianjin. Traditional practice was uh, really popular uh, in terms of uh, the availability of the style and the teachers. Uh, like 1970s to 1980s, in the, in the Tianjin where I live, I live in the Hedong district, which means the, 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 the east side of the river, that part. And there's a lot of uh, famous martial artists that live over there. In the summertime, when we go to the street, you can see just like the we have the jazz music festival in Montreal at um, around the Saint Catherine Street, like that kind of a level, it was so popular that you can see, you could see many styles was practiced and taught to uh, teachers at, uh, among teachers students. It was uh, this why I say the golden age of uh, Chinese martial art. When I started to learn from uh, grand my grandfather, he was. Uh, um, in his uh, later age, a little bit old uh, already, in order to help me to improve my practice, not only he taught me in person, but also he introduced me to many of his friend, contact, or even students learned to help me to improve my knowledge. His open-minded attitude reflects the overall social trend back then. It's not his was the. Uh, a super open-minded person. No, he's from old, the old age of society. He had the old mentality. But the social environment back then, in training, in practice, is is very open. So I had the opportunity to study not only from him but also other people, based on the social environment back then. So that I experienced that. Yeah. Do you think you mentioned that there was some during the. Republican era, era, there was a attempt to include outside non-Chinese influences into the training, and then you had, of course, the Cultural Revolution. Do you, do you think what do you think allowed practice in Tianjin to keep its high level of uh, orthodoxy, its its uh, traditional value? First of all, the Chinese martial art is the system of. Uh, Practice, physical practice, and the theoretical teaching is a combination of both. Even some, even more, the more elements can be involved. At least two main, two major aspects is the physical practice and the theoretical concept or theories. Back then, in uh, back then, in order to keep this uh, authentic, traditional, without uh, we say distorted in terms of practice, lot of uh, people shared their training manuals. Among each other, that's the first thing at the at the theoretical level. Second, many people they exchange their knowledge, and in order to improve the style, back then we did not have the concept of a survival of the style. We didn't think about that. What I heard every day is that, well, let's revise the style, make the style uh, get developed. So let's create something new based on what we know by sharing knowledge and the practice among each other. That was something pretty new. I think it was the was the later effect or post post effect of the republic republic concept, which has happened in China back to 1920s, 1930s. Like I have a lot of training manuals, even many of them are handwriting training manuals, and I I did the, the, the those document. I I still have it here in my house and in Montreal. Those documents are collected and shared by other people. Yes, I I did this. I put my own understanding and some of my teacher understanding. But the overall environment back then was sharing. So people did not mention, did not worry about the survival of the martial art. But they are looking for a broader spectrum of a benefit carried by the practice. It's not like now. Nowadays, people think about in China. Many people think about the survival of the traditional practice. 
which is the uh, should be uh, we should be a concern. But back if we talk about back then, we did not have that concern, and people really happily. Openly to share information. At the same time, since the sharing of the knowledge actually is to keep this authentic, and you 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 use the word uh, uh, the orthodox, right? Yeah. Is the is the, actually the sharing of this is the, to improve the style, develop the style, so that the traditional practice get preserved and developed. That is the positive way of uh, a practice instead of worry about many things. Of course, back then, some people still have this had this kind of mentality to keep a certain secret. But the popular slogan is that the real secret is that you have no secret. So back then. So it was like a living tradition and the idea was to make it as, as real as possible rather than doing things exactly the way that they done. Right? Exactly, exactly. And uh, there's a lot of new practice has been developed back to like 1940s, 1950s, or even 1980s. For example, in Tianjin, there are some famous styles such as the Xin Hui Zhang, developed by Zhao Daoxin, a, a, a student of uh, Zhang Zhao Dong, a, a, a classmate of my grandfather. Xin Hui Zhang, Xin means the mind, heart, Hui means the understanding, comprehension, or uh, mastering, Zhang is the palm. A style developed based on Xing Yi, Xing Yi Bao Gua Palm, and maybe some influence of each one, which is created by Wang Xiangzhai, so Xin Hui Zhang by Zhao Daoxin. And then Qiu Zhihe developed the Luo Xuan Quan. Luo Xuan means spiral, Quan means fist. That style is similar to Xin Hui Zhang, but put more on the upward, downward motion. Those two very practical and popular style back then right, indicate or reflect the fact that many people tried to develop the style based on the traditional value, practice, belief, system, and the theory. So constantly, Developing the style and pushing it forward is traditional concept, traditional idea. What is the tradition? Tradition is what people follow. So what is the real tradition? Tradition is that tradition should not be a dead concept, should be in a dynamic, developing, uh, ongoing the process. I perceive traditional is the concept. Tradition should be constantly developing. Otherwise, any practice developed 1,000, 2,000 years ago, even maybe half a million years ago in, as a caveman, but by, by the caveman should be the secret weapon. No, not at all. Not at all. Martial art is the technique system. Techniques should be tested, verified, improved, and strengthened in, in the society by practitioners. So that is the, I believe that's the real spirit of a tradition. It's not what what kind of uniform you wear, what kind of uh, salutation salute you will apply, what kind of martial jargon you use, and how long you you keep your mustache is. It's not about that at all. Okay, this at least is my understanding and based on my observation experience. And you mentioned the three golden ages, recent golden ages. Thank you. Um, do you think that post-cultural revolution, the reason that there was such a big, uh, there was so much sharing of ideas is, be is because of that, because there for, for a time there was no organized practice? I, I think so, because when a nation suffer, suffered, when a nation had suffered for about 10 years of uh, social, political, culture, you know, this kind of suppression, right? It's, uh, it's time for people, you know, to speak out to and get to get involved with uh, you know certain activities and they are, like I said the Chinese people was in the stage in the process of a pursuit of a broader spectrum of a well-being by working on the traditional or even new pra practice during that time many new style has been created as well like from 1990s. 2000, even 1980s, a lot of new style. I know a lot of people, some friends of mine, they tried to create a new style. Yes, they did not use the name of style, but as an approach. And even we still have this kind of phenomenon in China now, um, based on many, for many purposes, I have to say, many reasons. But back then, I believe that was a really positive and a memorable, memorable time for the Chinese practice back then. Around 1980, 1990s, start from the end of 1970s. Was there a time in your own life growing up where you realized that you were able to compare and contrast the different styles that you'd learned and 
recognize what was best from each style, or was that something that didn't occur to you early okay. on? Um, that's a very interesting question, and a deep question. Can, 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 we can, I can answer this question, you know, take a long time to answer this question. So at the macro level, I'm a CRO level, that I have a, you know, uh, experienced uh, different styles, not only in three of the internal style, but also many other styles. For example, a very popular, a lot of Shaolin and the Tongbei, Pigua, Lan Shou, many styles. Ba Ji, you know, in Tianjin was a super popular. Tianjin was the hot bed of the Ba Ji in back then, even today. And uh, I, 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 but my family had a very strict rule on me, especially from my grandfather that. I was not allowed to practice, to study certain styles, but you only can try something with a friend, with some neighbor, that's okay. But you, I was not allowed to systematically study certain styles. For example, wrestling, mm. Baji. I, I work on a little bit of uh, wrestling, but, uh, but never, never, never study at the system. Baji, I, I learned from my friend, some neighbors, but I didn't get into deep level. So that's the unfortunate fact. But, but at the macro level, which the, we talk about the three internal stuff I'm learning, just more specifically like Xing Yi. I studied Hebei style. I can say I have studied all the Hebei branches, all the Hebei branches, but we focus on three main Hebei branches. But uh, as for Shanxi branches, I have seen this as well. We tried different Shanxi style. I saw in, in Tianjin a lot of uh, famous Shanxi teachers, for example, Fan Ruifeng moved to, to Tianjin from Shanxi and, uh, and, and, and he's the son of the Fan Yongqing. Fan Yongqing was the disciple of the Che Yizhan. The direct, those are the direct lineage come to Tianjin and to teach. The, many, we have many famous Shanxi style teachers. I know the Fan family very well before. Um, uh, but so why have the study many styles? So my conclusion, especially my grandfather helping me that you can learn whatever you want, but focus on your main style. So my main style is the Xing Yi, next one is the Ba Gua, then later on Tai Chi. Even when I learned Tai Chi, I realized that all the Tai Chi have, there's an advantage, but in the beginning, I didn't know about this. After I studied a little bit of Yang style, I switched to Chen style because I found out Chen style more dynamic, more suitable to my personality and the character as a child. That's back then. But then I grew up, I was reached 30, 40, I realized well, a lot of other style Tai Chi, like Wu Hao style Tai Chi is great. Yeah. And even, even the Wu style Tai Chi is wonderful. Yang Sheng Fu, old frame and the middle, middle frame Yang style, what is, it's, uh, carries a lot of uh, valuable practice uh, in, in other styles. So I realized more and more that as a martial artist, if we do not want to stop uh, making progress, we should keep working on not only our own style, but also keep, have a keep open-minded attitude toward other style. Unfortunately, from the last um, about um, about the ten years of time, let's say ten year time, I stopped um, looking or checking or evaluating or researching um, other styles besides those three styles I'm learning. Why? Because I want to keep my practice pure. As the qualified martial artist, as experienced martial artist, it's so easy for us to get, to catch, to borrow, to understand, to identify certain practice and put those practice into our own practice. The result is that you can improve your skill maybe. However, the style I'm practicing will be less pure. So my responsibility is I carry the style and maintain as a pure label so that in the future, I'm able to transfer those knowledge to other people. So that's unfortunate part. Fortunately, if I follow this, I believe, you know, I will be able to, you know, have a, to, to, to have a, to provide a better benefit in terms of teaching to my students. So I have to balance both of them by sacrificing the, ben the personal benefit in order to maintain the purity of the style. So that's why to answer your question, I, I for the last 10 years, I stopped uh, looking for new concepts, new ideas, but I try to develop based on what I learned by understanding the old uh, martial art classics. Because I have a lot of uh, old documents that I can analyze because those documents are the root of the the three internal styles, what, what we have been learning for the last, uh, let's say, few decades. But those are the rooted and the older one. 
So I'm, I stopped. I I stopped looking to look for the new one, but I only look at the old one since I have been working on the contemporary uh, contemporary one, which I'm doing now. So I go back to the practice instead of going forward by borrowing and looking for other material practice inside or import from other martial artists or colleagues in China or outside of China. This is what I'm doing. So in order to have a better objective to achieve, we say higher goal, we have to sacrifice something for our own, you know, the objective of our own benefit in order to. You know, for the future generation, I believe that I have a strong sense of uh, you know responsibility, a sense, a strong sense of uh, duty. So that's, uh, uh, I believe, if I keep going like this, the 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 three internal martial art uh, will be you know uh, taught to practice better at least outside of China. Inside of China, in, inside of China, it's uh, there's so many people practice. There's so many martial artists. Uh, there's so many. Uh, smart people, so many great ideas, right? good or bad, it's, uh, it, it depends on you to judge, but I do my own job. Yeah. yeah. So you mentioned going back to the classics, uh, looking for things. You showed me something yesterday with the uh, in, insan t-shirt that, mm -hmm. that I'd never seen before when you were talking about like pressing up from this part of the head. Was that something that you learned early on or was that something that you got from the classics later when you're trying to deepen your practice by looking back to the classics? Oh, th those is from my grandfather, from my family practice. Most of the, you see the problem is in the, in old day of China, there's no such a, like the uh, autonomy, like autonomy uh, and, uh, oh, sorry, we, we didn't have a such of a terminology used in the West. So back then they used the term borrowed from the Chinese medicine to indicate a certain area of the body part. They, that's the old method. So a lot of terms borrowed or used in the, in the, in the martial art community are not precise. For example, they push up with the top of the head, so very top of the head, depending on your position of the head. If you keep like this, keep like this, the top of the head is different. Right. So where, so in different cell, we have different body structure. So top of the head has different definition, but those knowledge only can be, you know, uh, taught among teacher and students. Because when in, in, in writing document, there's no such a concept, no such a concept. However, there's a, there, once in a while, you're lucky if you can find some, uh, some uh, comments in some old document or some explanation of document that have some useful information. But uh, overall, Overall, a specific practice should be analyzed specifically between teacher and students, which is a problem of the of of the old way of, of uh, teaching. And that's another reason that I'm I'm working very hard to try to you know find a solution to promote those concepts, which is the motivation and the reason for me to started those uh, lecture series back then, back to what about four years ago? Soon will be four years now, right? That's one of the reasons, because I realized that the, the mistakes come caused by the misunderstanding and the misunderstanding caused by lack of the correct information and the, the lack of correct information is that maybe it's uh, caused by the culture, the misunderstanding. But the same thing happened in China also. Right. Since we use modern language now, but when you read the old document, they use different language, so a lot of misunderstanding can happen. So our job is to clarify this, verify this, then share the correct information with the community. Have you ever thought about taking the information that's in these classics that you've used yourself and just not exactly translating them, but rewording everything for in, in English so that English practitioners can understand since there's such a disconnect between the older Chinese medical language and... and uh... Yes, I, I'm working on this now. The, the, in the West, we have a, in the, uh, in the West, when we translate the Chinese into English, very often there's two mistakes. First, first mistake is that uh, they just use the Chinese term directly with explanation to use it. For example, Dan Tian, all those terms, right? And the second way is that use the English term to replace the Chinese word. However, the English term may not carry, may not express a specific meaning or same meaning as the Chinese. Right. And the way of thinking different. So what I'm doing now is I try to borrow the, or use the same term which we use in China and then uh, explain this in a, in a deep level, like we have so many lecture video, and each video will mention a lot of terms. So when people watch all those 200, more than 200 videos, uh, they, they will improve, strengthen, and enrich the vocab vocabulary of the terminologies that they used in you know, those, those concepts. 
any knowledge system is uh, is priced by the specific three things. Right? First is the is the the terminologies. Second is the theory. Then third thing is application and so on. So we have to set up the terminologies of the the the, the to understand what is the common language we use to express this. Then we. Based on this build up theory concept, then eventually we use those to guide our practice, which is the the which is the modern way. Even though in the old time we apply the same method, but it was not that specific. So that's our I think this is our job to you know is to apply the concept I learned in the wise in terms of uh, teaching, but used in introducing the traditional concept and knowledge. So. Looking at what you know about the traditional way of teaching things and the way that things are being done in general in modern times, what do you think is missing from modern practice, especially in the West? I believe that I have the first-hand experience because I live in both both right. the society. One is the China, China, one is the West. When I came to Canada, I was uh, what 31, 32, 31 years old before 32 years old, and then now I'm uh, in the in the you know, this age now, right? I've been living here closer to the time I live in China. Close, almost close. Okay, in, in few years, be the same. Uh, I really like the, the learning and the teaching are different um, between those two societies. In China, I believe that's the best place to practice, to practice. But I believe in the white, it's the, the, the white way of teaching is the best. It's much better than in China. Anything, any approach, any method we are adapting is not perfect, including both West and East. For example, according to the Chinese way of teaching that you just do the practice, you just do the movement. When I'm happy, I go to correct you. If I'm not happy, uh, I, I just, you just keep going. I'm talking about the traditional way. I'm not, I'm not talking about the Wushu, Wushu uh, school, okay, and not talking about that's the modern, modern way, modern, modern uh, martial arts university. We talk, talk about the, the traditional way. And if you're lucky, you have a family member and they, they can help you, well, it will be much better. Um, the advantage is that the students will develop a, a, a strong skill of observation, imitation, practice, self reflecting, and so on. But at the same time, it's not very effective in terms of uh, learning progress and not efficient either because it takes so much time for people to turn around you know, to make mistakes. That's not the good way in terms of uh, teaching. In the West, uh, the teaching is uh, we are using a scientific approach in the West. It's uh, like a science uh, in the, in the, in the, uh, because I work in the, in the education um, and the field in, in Canada. I realized that the Western way of teaching is great compared to what I experienced. Of course, right now, nowadays in China, they apply the same same method, which has been modernized, westernized in the education system in China, right? And uh, but still, in come to the traditional practice, in even even nowadays, many people still use the old method in terms of teaching. Either they go to the social uh, social network, the social like we in Ch Chinese like those kind of uh, YouTube, the same style of uh, platform. They 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 do commercial, right? they show different thing. Or they still they still use the old way. So those kind of the social network, those kind of video platform, these kind of teaching examples is not a real teaching. When they teach, this is old way. They just show how they do this. It's commercial purposes. But in the West, and here, not the same story. The teacher will and have to break down each movement into details. For example, why met um, a friend of mine, Mr. Ken Fish from the United States. Uh, we have known each other for almost a decade now. Yeah, decades now. And when 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 I met him, we 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 we, sh I realized that by dealing with him, by communicating with him, uh, he he has a certain way of teaching because based on his professional training background, I realized well that's the really good way. So gradually, I uh, I learned adopted the Western way of teaching, and uh, then in helping my students. So I realized that this advantage. What disadvantage? Disadvantage here is this: people lack of uh, physical experience. Mm. They enjoy the theoretical, conceptual those ideas, and they want to understand everything, but they do not want to experience this. Right. 
They think, oh, we have to, oh, understand this. We call, I call this the intellectual laziness. Yeah. If you think they understand this now, actually, physically, they are lazy. They are not capable to do the movement. So a lot of uh, simple practice we use in China, which is in practice, become so-called secret in the West. Why? Because students do not want to practice it physically. They think they understand this, but at the same time, they, 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 they believe they already can do it, it's, right. which is not the fact, right. it's not the true, right. it's not the reality. So that's the disadvantage of the Western of a practice. But in terms of teaching, it's perfect. If we can have the Western way of teaching and the Chinese way of practice, when the two best factors meet each other, we will have a really great, we say, teaching and learning environment of, of the situation in the West. In Montreal, I have uh, many good students right, they're learning different styles with me, and my, most of them are not uh, willing to, uh, is, uh, to, share, uh, to, to, uh, to share their uh, information or experience <clears throat> in public. But I know many of, the, many of my students work very hard. I have some other students in different countries that learn from me, you know, once a while come to Montreal, or they, I have them in different way. Many of them are really, really great martial artists. Um, but I always say, well, if we can combine, integrate both systems together to create a new one, that would be great. So it's not, it's not only based on a teacher's perspective, but also students should be able to you know, take this approach to work on this as well. Otherwise, it's a, the mutual two-way of communication or two-way of knowledge sharing experience will get blocked. Right, so that's what I see, what I have uh, experienced. Yeah, I've experienced that with uh, myself, what you call intellectual laziness, where you understand the concept and you think, okay, it's good enough. And then on the other side of it, you know, having been taught in a traditional manner at times, been frustrated for a very long period of time because something wasn't being explained to me. But when I finally did grasp the concept that was trying to be taught, then I, it was ingrained in me, in my mind, in my mm. body also. So you take that from the traditional Chinese teaching method and then the explanation of the theoretical aspect from the Western method. What's the bridge there? How do we, how do we get the student to put in the actual work and get the, get the th theory and technique into their body? Okay. I have to say something may not be politically correct. Okay. I think both, both parties, including teacher and, te and the student, should be talented. Yeah. First of all, now, if the knowledge from the teacher, so teacher should be qualified. Yeah. Second, the students should, students should be talented. I have a couple of students in China, they work very hard. However, due to the educational situation, physical uh, lim uh, limitation, and the intellectual capacity, their progress is so slow, it's very frustrating. Sometimes when I check their practice, I say, well, what I'm doing, why do I waste my time and uh, to work, working by other people? And, but at the same time, I realized that well, it's caused by the, the issue of the distance, caused by the, the different uh, under, uh, uh, communication method. I, I, I see this. And, but then at the same time, I, I criticized myself. I said, well, if there's a, the way uh, the communication between the teacher and the students cannot match to each other, we'd better stop. Yeah. So otherwise, I always in the situation to criticize myself. At the same time, every time I see that person in person on on on, on the internet by, by the, 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 the the what Zoom or Chinese team or whatever, then I got frustrated. I'm not enjoying those kind of frustrated situation anymore. So I'm thinking, well, maybe to answer your question, just sort of have a m m matching, right? matching. Yeah, I see what perspective. You're but at the same time, another question, another issue will raise from here, that we should focus on one-to-one -one teaching or one-to-100, 200 teaching. So that becomes a challenging question. Now, I think my basic answer is, if we teach 100 people at the same time, we, do not, we should never expect that all of them will have the same level of understanding, dedication, and the practice or talented uh, potential. We just say, well, if we're lucky, we get 10% of them, or 20% of good, 80% just keep going. That may be a solution. So as a teacher, we have to adjust our, uh, our expectation or speculation. And then by working with more people, so that when more people have, a, you know, have a more potential, then 
potentially we will be able to, as a teacher, protectively find the better students. At the same time, the teach student should feel free to, to walk around to visit other people in order to find a better teacher. This, so that's, to me, this kind of dilemma and this, again, I still do not have a perfect answer or perfect solution for this in terms of that we should focus on one-to-one -one or one-to-multiple, one-to-many. So my objective is I should focus on one to 100, 200 money people. But at this moment, this moment, if I limited, you know, get frustrated due to the one to one experience, maybe that's my mistake. So I'm rethinking my teaching method as well at the same time, caused by the, the experience that I'm helping a couple of people in China now is, is, is I got a lot of frustration recently. A yeah. Re lot of, I think I mentioned it to you already, but the reason is I want them to be good. I want them to be able to carry my practice, right. and uh, and uh, but when I see the situation, I feel very bad. I feel extremely <laughs> frustrated. <laughs> I'm sorry to mention this. No, okay? It's okay, I don't I do not want to po no. promote the negativity, no, but no, no, it's no. the yeah. that's the situation. That's yes. The situation. So you talked about trying to keep your your practice pure and keeping outside influences out of it, other than the three main martial arts that you practice. Uh, do you think that your Bagua practice and your Tai Chi practice it strengthened your Shingi practice and vice versa. When, mm. when you began learning Bagua, mm. did you start mm. to see that mm. there is a, a connection between those two arts and did it help? My, I learned, my first teacher is my grandfather. Right. He studied from the Zhang Zhao Dong. Zhang was the founder of the Xingyi Bagua Pang. Xingyi Bagua Pang is the style that created by Zhang Zhao Dong based on two persons teaching. One is the, is the Zhong Hai Chuan, which is the, the Bagua Foundation, but he studied from Liu Qilan, the disciple of the founder of Xing Yi, which is the, 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 the Li Luoneng. Yeah. So he integrated the two systems become a Xing Yi Bagua Palm. However, the foundation, the root of the Xing Yi Bagua, Bagua Palm is still Xing Yi. When you see Chinese, but the first word, more important, Xing Yi Bagua Palm, not the Bagua Xing Yi Palm. <laughs> so Xing Yi Bagua still Xing Yi. Xing Yi gave the a practitioner strong body structure, powerful Fa Jin, but the Bagua improved the flexibility, transform of the energy or trans transmit energy um, in different part and quick, fast stepping method. Tai Chi, Tai Chi, I learned Tai Chi very late. When I was 17, 16, I started studying the Chen style before I learned some Yang style. You can neglect that part. I realized that stepping method of Tai Chi is very weak. It's very weak compared to Xing Yi and Ba Gua. But the, the emphasis of the lower Dantian area, especially circulating energy in Chen style, can help a Xing Yi or Ba Gua practitioner improve a soft power level much quicker than practice purely on Xing Yi and Ba Gua. So I practiced the three of them when I focus on the benefit, I focus on specifically three of them. I do not miss up on them, but why I try to um, uh, experience some martial energy or self-defense, I use whatever is comfortable. Right. Again, Xing Yi is really great for developing martial power. Bagua is really great for developing fast stepping, and the Tai Chi is really great for developing the Dantian or lower Dantian area energy with the generation or expulsion or execution, really good for this. Um, however, there's a problem with this. The, the common mistake with Xing is a stiffness. Common mistake with Bagua is about sloppiness, mm. sloppy and sloppy. The common mistake with the Tai Chi is the, uh, is the, is the non-strengthened, unstrengthened, in-strengthened, or de-strengthened body structure. So many Tai Chi practitioners couldn't differentiate between soft and flexibility. They think being soft is being flexible, which is totally wrong, okay, totally wrong. So that can be a side effect or mistake, a common mistake in Tai Chi community, but which can be corrected, strengthened, correct, or improved by practicing other styles like Xing Yi, or Ba Gua, especially Xing Yi. One of your teachers that you talked about, or not teachers, but one of your influences that you talked about was Xu Dian, Xu Dian's mm -hmm. Xing Yi, mm -hmm. and I believe that you said that one of his contributions to Xingyi was that he recognized that there was this potential stiffness in Xingyi practice and that he uh, created his, his style to um, counteract that stiffness. Mm -hmm. Could you talk a little bit about that? Yes. Xue Dian 
is a legendary figure in the Chinese martial art community. Back back then in back in Tianjin, when I was a child, people didn't take a didn't avoid using his name because he was the executed or uh, uh, disappeared around the nineteen beginning of nineteen fifty nineteen fifty one fifty two. Uh, due to political other reasons, but that back then people was was、uh, freely to 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 share. Okay, that's、uh, from Xue Dian, that from Xue Dian, that how Xue Dian practiced. We didn't have the taboo. Recently, in Chinese community in mainland China, many people say, oh Xue Dian was a Yi Guan Dao member. With the Yi Guan Dao is a cult. Okay, a member. So people didn't mention him, which is not true. It was not true at all. I first handedly experienced that, that people freely share his practice. So now the question becomes: What make Xue Dian's practice unique? We, in order to answer this question, we have to see his uh, practice, uh, his his、uh, experience. Li Zhenbang, Li Zhenbang is the son of、uh, Li Taihe. Li Taihe is the son of、uh, Li Luoneng, the founder of、uh, Xing Yi. So. Li Zhenbang, which is the main teacher of、uh, Xue Dian, he learned Hebei style because he he live in Hebei and、uh, learned from his family. When his grandfather Li Luoneng went back to his hometown, then he his son his father they studied the、uh, Hebei style. However, he worked in Shanxi, so he taught Shanxi He in Shanxi Hebei style in Shanxi. Unavoidably, his Hebei style must have a certain impact of caused by Shanxi practice. So I say that is that Xu Dian's upper part is a Hebei style, which extended posture, but his the lower part, which is the lower dante area, the hip area, is a Shanxi style. So his body is combination of the Hebei and the Shanxi structure due to his training experience. When he moved to Tianjin, he practiced later on, improved and made his name in Tianjin until he passed away. He created his own branch of Xian Xing Yi and Xiang Xing Shu, which is a new uh, uh, creation or invention or innovation. Okay, so from his practice, we can clear, clearly to see that. The influence of a Shanxi style in Hebei practice, especially his lower Dantian area. Back to then, we even talk about his Xiang Xing Shu. His Xiang Xing Shu is more about the combination of the Xing Yi and even some other styles. Other style was popular maybe in the his his hometown Hebei area, or when he traveled to other area in China, and、uh, to have a knowledge is、uh, exchange with other martial artists. I have a lot of research result about this part, but to make a long story short, Xu Dian could combine, integrate different practice into his system, so that the common mistake of the Xing Yi, which is the stiffness of this area, could be avoided. People may say, "Well, those kind of problem is not the problem caused by the style." I can say, well, if a lot of people have same problem, that's the problem of style,、mm-hmm. right? So I say that's the problem of style, and、uh, some problem is caused by individual practice, but this the stiffness of this area, that is a style issue. But Shuidian practice can overcome this with the 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 shortage of issues of the carried by the style, and also he he when he did created his Xiang Xing Shu, that.、Uh, He used a special stepping pattern to strengthen, improve the flexibility of the body. Also, used to be able to develop, we say, soft or flexible power through practicing Xiang Xing Shu. That's、uh, and the emphasis on the body method of Shen Fa in Xiang Xing Shu practice. I think that's the major contribution of Xue Dian. And, and what do you think his influence for the Shangxing Shu was? He, the the stepping and the and the the body structure was that something from Shangxi Xingyi, or was that something from another martial art? Do you say? I think from his hometown practice or some other style of martial art, not from Shangxi at all. Shangxi, don't forget Shangxi, what Shangxi Xingyi, right? Right. It's not Shangxi 
whatever. Right. Not the Shanxi uh, vinegar, because Shanxi have very good vinegar. In China, they have few vinegar. In Shanxi, Shanxi have the one of the best vinegar, not the Shanxi vinegar. And the uh, typical stepping of the Xingyi, when they, for example, when they change the direction, yeah. normally they change one, two. Yeah. Xue Dian always like this. Yeah. It's overstepping, yeah. overturning. Yeah. That requires flexibility of the, this area, which is the more difficult area. Those practice has been part of the system. Of course, naturally, the practitioner will improve their flexibility. And when the certain area gets improved, other related area will get improved as well. Right? Because whole body is the system. Right. So, so I believe that uh, he, his uh, contribution is that he can integrate many different styles into his uh, own system. It's genius. It's just a genius. And, uh, I watch a lot of uh, old uh, Xing Yi photos. I believe Xue Dian, the, that's the picture, is the best compared to other people in the same, same time, same area. Same, their picture very weak. Yeah. Very weak. You can say he's a great martial artist yeah, by name. By, by what? By, I don't know by what, but by what standard? But compared to Xue Dian photo together, one is like a tiger, the other one is like a cat. Yeah. That's it. Yeah, it's very evident from its posture. Evidence is not that you, you, you cannot say, I look internally, but how can you see internally? Do you have this kind of special vision? No, we just, we have to see the face value. We analyze the face value first, then analyze the internally. You cannot say this internally very strong. How do you feel this? The paper is strong or what strong? Right. right. We just say the matter of fact. Right. Again, I'm not being uh, uh, politically correct. That's okay. <laughs> uh, you mentioned that when you were growing up that people talked freely about Xu Dian and his practice. Was his style commonly practiced when you were a child? Did many people practice it? No. Not a bar common. Yeah. Um, first of all, he was executed around 1952, around that time he disappeared. Yeah. And uh, before he he stopped before he he disappeared. Um, he almost retired from uh, um, in, from the end of the 1940s to beginning 1950 before he passed away. He contributed his most of the time to write books, to write books, and uh, but he had he taught thousand people that back then thousand people because he was the the the, the director of Tianjin Martial Art Academy. He was the the, the number one. He was the, the director. And uh, he, that's how he made made, made a living. Uh, how they make his fortune? Actually, he was a very rich rich man at that time, and very successful, you know, financially in the social so social level. You, know, you use modern or older way to evaluate his success, great success. Um, he had a lot of students, but after he got executed, people won't happily to mention that, oh, that's from Xue Dian and, uh, and no, they, they say, oh, but well, that's how he practiced. His practice became less popular from the 1980s. Why? Because one government, one different martial art organization to make effort, to put efforts to research, analyze, promote, systematically uh, promote also traditional practice. There's no individually can say, well, this is the Xue Dian style. I'm the one who carried this. I was too young back then, from 1980. I was a teenager back then. And, but so his style was neglected by the community, even though he had a great style. But people try to avoid potential issue. Yeah. I can promote the style, but when I talk about hey, who made the style, what is the, 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 the story, where he disappeared, well, that is still politically was uh, not that uh, you know, favorable situation. Yeah. So, so in this situation, no one promoted style. I was the first one to prom to write article, to make a video, to take a photo, to introduce his style. And then around the 2006, 2007 something, there's the famous novel a book published in China named Shi Qu de Wu Lin, Disappearing, oh, uh, Disappearing Martial Community something. Uh, yeah. Nice novel, okay? The book published, then his name became so well known because in that book they talk about the, how great he was, about his achievement, his story. Well, use the use the the the, the modern this kind of uh, li, li, uh, uh, literal this method to promote him, which is a great success as a book. Right. But though people start to de develop a curiosity about his practice, but back then already I published a lot of video, a lot of article, photos about the student practice. And uh, even today, some some people say, well, you know, and uh, 
uh, how, how do you know your, your private student self? Yeah, I know it's a student self from Tianjin. I learned from my teacher, from Shui students. What, what, what the problem? And uh, people say, and uh, even Shui Dian's son, Xu uh, Zhiyi, he passed away a few couple of years ago. He said, oh, my father didn't have a students. Then my argument is, if your father didn't have a student, how could he have the money to, to marry your mother and then to have you? Because Xu Dian married in his hometown, then moved to Tianjin, he married again right, to make a fortune. And how, how can he make give you money? Uh, because when Xu Dian passed away, Mr. Xu, this, uh, this uh, fellow just passed away a few years ago, he was uh, two or three years old. He couldn't learn anything from his father, unless he learned this uh, before he come to, uh, he, unless he learned this uh, primordially. I, I don't think that's the case. And, and uh, so he was not happy Right, to, to, to see someone like me to promote the family style. Mm -hmm. And he wanted to say he know the style, but his father passed away. Then he said he learned from the 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 the, the brother in law of Xue Dian, the brother in law. So Xue Dian is here, brother in law called the Xin Guang Xin, Mr. Xin is here, so the son is here. Mm -hmm. But he tried to be at here. I said, no no no, biologically you are here, but technically you are here. Here, Xue Dian, he's my Xue Dian teachers. I'm here, so we are the same generation. See, I never argue about this with anyone else, but people would question me about why do you promote the Xue Dian style? It's for my family, our family should teach this, but he, doesn't, he didn't practice much. Right. So that's some issue in China back then, because back then he, he, he was alive. Unfortunately, he, I heard he passed away and, uh, and, uh, and uh, a couple of years ago, so I hope he take a good rest in another world. And, but I will keep promoting Xuanzhen style. I believe I I learned. I believe what the material I learned from my teachers reflects the the deep knowledge, deep level of the Xuanzhen uh, practice. It's, I believe. I also believe that any practice cannot be. Uh, transmitted or taught through blood, blood line. Mm -hmm. And I believe only genetic disease or virus can be transmitted by blood or genetically, you know, by in the family. I believe this. Right, yeah, that's, that's, right. that's science. Uh, uh, you, you, you find his son, grandson, grand grandson, potentially you have the, you know, you can be great. But you've never learned from that person, too bad to you, right? If we have to move on, right, it is a matter of fact. So that's the problem of the, uh, right now, the the Shudian practice. I really, for a few few years ago, I really um, started. Uh, I worked very hard to promote the Shudian style in China. I have uh, many people that practice the Shudian Xing uh, Yi and the Sam Xiang Yin Shu, uh, and uh, uh, based on my teaching, this is making me very happy. However, however, again, however, all of them in China who learned from me and uh, and uh, the all students over overseas. It's not that good as the people who I'm learning from me from Montreal. I say from Montreal, not in Montreal, because people from other places come to the study. So I believe all, most of my students who learn from here is much better the quality than people who learn from me in China. It's a matter of fact. It's an unfortunate situation. As the Chinese Canadian, as the Canadian Chinese, I really hope people in China can practice this style very well. Unfortunately, due to my uh, presence, it's mainly in Canada, in Montreal, and uh, I didn't have a lot of chance to teach them. So the quality of this practice is much better outside of China. So Just far. Because of the fact that you're able to teach them in person, you think they're a yes. better representative yes. of the style? Yes. Yeah. In Chinese practice, it's hard to be great if you learn this only online. Right. So it's very hard to, to make someone great very, uh, in practice, uh, in good level, without physical you know, teaching, physical correction in practice. It's almost impossible. But you can build a strong foundation remotely to practice, but you have to you know, come to the teacher in person at least once to get corrected. And uh, this is based on my experience. Maybe as a teacher, I'm not that talented to teach people remotely so far. Uh, maybe in the future I will be, I'll be able to, but now, so far, no, I cannot. It's something that's difficult to teach online without being able to physically experience it. I think so. Yeah, difficult for the student also. Yes. Let's keep going. Let's sure. keep going. Sure. 
By the way, audience, I have to drink tea. It's my only was a pleasure enjoyment thing in life. Okay, I enjoy tea very much. Some people they're not happy to see I drink tea on the YouTube. Well, too bad to you, right? I, I enjoy this. It's my time, my channel. Please let me do it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty happy about it. I have all the great tea. You know, anyone come to here, you'll be able to enjoy great tea. You know? So, you know, yesterday we worked a little bit on some like power generation exercises mm. and things of that nature. Mm. And I've heard it said that you can't really practice Xing Yi at a high level without practicing spear because of the uh, learning the mechanics of the power generation that comes with learning spear. Is that true? Uh, I haven't. I. I don't know how to answer this question. Seriously, I really don't know how to answer this question. I believe practicing the practice of the spear will accelerate the progress of the empty hand form. But Xing Yi was created without using a spear. So, claim of, uh, I say this also, you want to practice Xing Yi, you have to practice spear. But the, the, my explanation is you want to practice Xing Yi make progress faster and accelerate the progress, spear practice is essential. Without the practice spear, you still can be a great Marsh Xing Yi practitioner, but practice spear will help you understand the body structure of the power generation. But at the same time, we keep in mind that too early to practice spear may not help you improve your empty hand or bare hand form. Because the structure is a little bit different, the power generation is difficult. In the beginning, better to focus on the empty hand, then at certain later on, then use a spear, you use any other weapon to strengthen the body. Uh, again, spear practice cannot replace the empty hand practice. Empty hand practice can Im can uh, can improve its quality by involving spear practice. Uh, there's two different things, a uh, different uh, practice. Uh, they cannot replace by the other one. They cannot replace each other. But practice spear will definitely help a practitioner to improve the Xing Yi practice. It's essential. I can see it. It's quite a good level. Essential. Yeah. But I, um, I think that some people also, you, you mentioned that Xing Yi was created without the spear. And there are some people in the West that have this conception that everything should be as close to the spear as possible. And it's almost as if they're doing spear movements with empty hand. Could you talk maybe about what you think the origin of Xing Yi as an empty hand art is? Like how close is it to the art of the spear? If, to answer this question, we have to look back at the history of the Xing Yi development. When Li Luonong the time created the Xing Yi, it's based on the Dai family Xing Yi. Dai family Xing Yi already it's, uh, it was away from the Xin Yi Liu He, which is the, the, the early the, the, the mother style of uh, Dai family Xin Yi. So Xin Yi Liu He, Dai family Xin Yi, then Xin Yi, Hebei style, Shanxi style, right. that, then many other, other small branches. From Li Luoneng time, it's the time that martial art practice shifted from the weapon focus oriented style to empty hand style. Look at the Xin Yi movement, the, the front, this kind of weighted structure, that's the old style, Why? that's based on weapon structure. Yeah. When come Li Luoneng, the weight move backward, because San Ti stands, it is the empty hand style, it's not the weapons, not weapon style anymore. However, that's the lower part, the upper part still have the, the, the weapon holding structure. Over emphasizing the benefit of the spear, uh, the impact of the spear is incorrect. But neglect, neglect of the 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 impact, the, the benefit of a practice spear in Xing Yi practice is uh, incorrect also. So we have to balance these two parts. The creation of the Xing Yi is developed for the bare hand, empty hand. But look, look, but look backward. Those the his the mother style, which is the even grandmother style, we call the Xin Yi Liu He, they based on the weapon. Then if we use the weapon concept to guide, to evaluate, to judge, to the, the, the empty hand form, that is the incorrect, it's the wrong approach. So spear have spear practice help a Xing Yi practitioner to develop Xing Yi power or martial energy, but cannot 
develop any technique. The spear technique cannot be applied in the empty hand directly. Some people say, well, we can. Of course you can. It is mechanically trans, uh, we say shifted. It's not, the, it's not like, like systematically organized. When we analyze the, the technique, so expecting, speculating that directly apply the spear technique into the empty hand movement is wrong. By the way, most people, not most people, all of the people who claim the Xing Yi derived from spear do not know the old spear system. I learned the old spear system. So if you I can name the explain the old spear system, then you, you say build a link with Xing Yi, that'd be good. Otherwise, you just uh, make a slogan to say Xing Yi is a spear technique, but if you don't know spear technique, why you say so? It's only slogan, commercial. Right. Commercial. Marketing. Marketing. Yeah. Uh, marketing, good word, commercial. Yeah. Part of marketing. Right? <laughs> right. Slogan is what they say. I really dislike those phenomena that some people just repeat their slogan and then instead of give us a clear explanation, or oh, some even worse, they distort, misinterpreted, misrepresent the old term because he knows some Chinese language in the West. That's really, really bad. It's really negative to the style. Yeah. But I, I hope now overall the community is improving, right? Yeah. Improving. I, I look further, I look future, it's very bright, the, the image very bright, and um, temporarily one or two, you know, uh, story incident will not change the overall trend of the style development. It's how I see this. I think sometimes it's people that are looking for something different to say this so that they can have an angle or a niche to fill to get attention to themselves. Yes, maybe, or maybe yeah, it's just ignorance. Differentiation. Right. You, because you use the word marketing, one key concept in marketing is the differentiation. It's different themselves from others. But differentiation can be differently great or differently badly, right? It depends how you how you see this. So while we're talking about misconceptions, something that I wanted to talk about on camera, which I know that we talked about a long time ago, I, I read a book that suggested that the 12 animals or animal forms in general actually came before the five elements in Shinyi Luha. Misconception. <laughs> okay. Because the, 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 the book in question was saying that the animal forms in Xin Yi Luho came from shamanistic practice yes. in China. Yes. Sorry, uh, please forgive me. I clean the tea dust. I think it's more important to clean the tea, da tea dust than answer this uh, uh, funny <laughs> question. This question really bad. First of all, let's see the development of Chinese martial art practice. You are talking about the development or creation of the practice. They're two different things. Let's talk about the Development first, the the order, the sequence of the development of certain skill, certain technique is not based on we have an animal movement first and then have elements. Not at all. Now let's come back to Xing Yi. Xing Yi the, in the beginning is based on the Dai family Xing Yi, based on Lao San Quan old three fist, and then Li Luo Neng changed the three old fist, which is a concept a a, a basic practice into five elements practice, which carries the five martial energy. Then based on this, he developed a specific technique of 12 animals. That's how we created Xing Yi. But if you say, well, 8,000 years ago at the caveman, they must have animal first, wait a minute. If they see that, how, otherwise how could they create a dragon form? Dragon is a metaphor. Right. We can see snake, we can see phoenix, we can see turtle, we can see the eagle, which is a combination of the dragon. But how can you have a dragon form back then? Yeah. Right. That's so for, false claim. We talk about the Xing Yi. We don't talk about 8,000 years ago, 10,000 years ago, when people wear leaf as clothes. We don't say that. Right. We say now. Now, let's talk about practice. No one would practice animal form with before prior to practicing of the five elements. So you have to practice five elements, then five animal, other routine weapons and upkeep and so on. So from the creation, in, in, in inventing the style to the practice, well, this claim bothly are wrong. Yeah. If we say for the last, uh, let's say, 2,000, 3,000 years of history, but before 5,000, 10,000, when Egyptians created a pyramid, that time they maybe used a different method, 
I have no idea. Please go to Egypt to check this script on the inside the pyramid. Maybe you can find a better answer. Yeah. But to the Chinese perspective, I only can say that's not true. That is a false claim. That is imagination, speculation, which create misperception. So you talked about having different teachers and uh, different influences. Can you name any specific moments or incidences that caused you to change your own practice compared to the things that you were taught? Yes, some um, while ago, I talked to my talked to my with my students about how I improve myself and by learning, adapting, and uh, modifying what I learned before. I realized that there are two things I have to, I'd like to point it out that I use the word modifying is not that I change, it's different from what I changed, what I learned from before. I just will say, well, by, under, by better and a deeper understanding, understanding of what I learned with them, or oh, then I come to a new level of the understanding of the practice by following the principles. When I was a child, when I learned a lot of practice with my different teachers, I could I believed back then I understood what did they say. And then I later I realized, well, I misunderstood them at the first place. And then now, oh maybe that's a better understanding. I test this, verify this with my student, I realize hmm, what I'm understanding now is correct. That's the first of all. Second, all the my teachers I learned, most of them I can say only learned one maximum two styles. And I learned three styles. And most of them, when they learned one or two styles, they only stayed one or two branches even. I learned many, many branches. So I'm in the good position that for the knowledge wise, I have more information. And the second, educational wise, I'm more educated than all my teachers in terms of modern system and the old standard. I'm not saying at the old standard, I'm no, I learned the old classic system as well. And then third, for the teaching the peers, I not only taught in China, but also in the West. Not only in English, but also, or not only in Chinese, but also in English and maybe a little bit French, right? A few words in French. So, so I have, a, I believe I have more teaching experience than all my teachers. So recently I wrote, I wrote an article and uh, sent to my, share with my friend and said, well, I'm this age now. I believe my practice has uh, exceeded all my teachers in terms of uh, understanding the, the topic and teaching different people and create a, a structure of the knowledge, organize the information, and promote the style, and uh, systematically you know, disseminate those uh, practices. Uh, compared to my teacher, I have, I have done a uh, lot of things compared to them. I'm not saying they are not good, they are, they are great, but I focus on different perspective. So technically, I modified some specific um, uh, topic or practice. But overall, I try to put all the information together as the system in a more holist, holist, uh, systematic way, so that practitioner or student will get the practice in a uh, more effective or more efficient way. That's what I'm looking for. It's not that I deliberately changed what I learned. I build this kind of improvement by better understanding what I learned. Of course, it doesn't mean all of them, what, what all the practice they taught me is right. I have to say this, some of the practice is wrong, is incorrect due to their limitation. Or oh, maybe today I still don't understand what they taught me, but I believe what they taught, some of them taught me is incorrect. And they because over said on one aspect, but the other aspect is, is missing. And uh, I believe I'm in a good position to improve the certain practice of the style, especially in the Xing Yi style. I, I have been uh, in the process to improve the style, not only my, myself, but also the overall practice of the system in China. Could you give me an example of something that you think is commonly done incorrectly in Xing Yi practice as you see it done mm. in China and the West? Oh yes, many, many. Last week, I post a new video. Its name is uh, 
the the three it's a one proverb in the talk about the three magne three type of a mechanism of a uh, energy much energy uh, transmission. So I said reach energy with the hand, then body chase, then body eventually push right. right. And many people, oh, it's great, but many people always wrong. It's not, it's, it's not correct. But so, some of my teacher overemphasize the importance of a dantian. They think when your defense is dantian, everything dantian. No, it's now we see it's not true. If we believe that the concept of zhou shen wu shu bu dantian, oh, everywhere in the body is dantian, instead of only this area is dantian, right? So what they taught me is wrong. Because they overemphasized on the Dantian, and those people didn't differentiate the, the 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 practice and application. In application, you focus on Dantian, but you initiate the stack uh, attack or block that maybe arm, maybe elbow. It's not a lower Dantian because everywhere in the body can be considered Dantian. So all the time they emphasize on this, but now I realize what the, what they said is wrong, and uh, and then. If it is everything is right, why they have an intention all the concept body chase the fist? Why? Oh, body chase the fist because we want to move fast. Right? Use that intent to chase the hand. Yeah. Nothing wrong. Right? So, so, so that's just that give example which the video in the video last week. Right. Because the hand moves first because it's just a reflex. Faster. Right? Yeah. Faster. In martial art, we should reach a level that your subconscious mind to work when you punch a block without the thinking, subconscious level. How can you I think Dan Tian then no way. That's wrong. So the book right recorded these sentences, Dan Tian is the center. Yet Dan Tian said never say Dan Tian should guide every moment. Right. And you were you were saying we talked a little bit about this yesterday. You were saying that uh, you thought maybe or may, I think you said you thought that this was a result of static practice and yes. instead of dynamic. Yes, yes, because in practice, most of the time, teacher have students. They have students in a static practice state. Oh, you keep stance, you move this over here. The top of coordination, but when they move, then different story. And most of teacher do not have the experience to correct students in a dynamic stage. Forget application. Many teachers even never reach application level. So how can they correct student application? Since the teacher don't have the knowledge of application and the dynamic stage, of course they only talk about the term, explain the term based on the static state of practice. It's, it's nothing wrong, it just reflects the different level of understanding the art. I think that's a good example of how something gets repeated a lot until everyone thinks that it's gospel like yes. as they say yes. you know that it's the absolute truth if a person wanted to start training in shingi and they were looking for a good shingi practice and they went to look at a teacher what sort of things should they be looking for good and bad what are some things that stand out to you as a bad shingi practice or let's not say bad let's yes. say not not fully developed yes i first of all i agree with you you use the word you are you are free you are allowed to use the word bad because bad what means bad his practice is wrong, but he claims he's the best. Yeah. People have a wrong practice, but they claim, oh, they, are, they, have, they have the ultimate truth. Yeah, that's bad. That's bad. Yeah. I have to say that's bad. Right. You are allowed to Absolutely. say that's bad. Yeah, of course. But some teachers, they work very hard, they are serious, but they, their practice is uh, have some issue. How to see that? First of all, Xing Yi is a martial art mainly for self-defense. Mm -hmm. And of course, they have the health benefit. But if so, self defense needs to be speed, strength, martial energy, martial power, reflex, uh, whole body coordination. So, if you see the movement, the demonstration, the practice, lack of certain elements, that is not a good one. And, 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 and also, you should be able to explain the practice based on the theory in the more based on the modern and the traditional perspective to be able to explain this. And also you should be able to demonstrate that you have a skill of teaching. You cannot say I'm just a, a good practitioner, I am not a patient in teaching, I'm bad in teaching. That's not a good teacher. You can say, well, I'm a good practitioner, but I'm not a good teacher. You have to agree with this. But the problem is people try to put a lot of height on their on their head. So that make them have more titles, which is wrong. You can be great in practice, but that doesn't mean you know how to teach. I know some people very good in teaching, 
but their practice is not that good. Mm-hmm. Why? Because they cannot express it physically, but verbally, no, they can't do it. I have a student in China, his practice is not quite his students. His student better than him. I said, well, hey, you are very smart. You are talented because you can teach someone without demonstrating this. I know the reason because student watch my video. His student watch my video. And then he, he repeat what I, I teach him. So they make smart students make progress. But him, not that good physically. So he's a good teacher, bad teacher. I think he's a good teacher, but bad practitioner. Right? You see, this, this, this not, no one, it's not easy to find someone you know, who be good in both in practice and the teaching. Sure. But as a teacher, we have to admit this. If you don't admit this, you think you have the ultimate, have the ultimate truth by twisting some word, by, by changing the meaning of certain terms, you're just wrong. Oh, by the way, the Xing Yi spear, right? Xing Yi spear. You, 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 someone, you or someone mentioned it yesterday. I didn't go further because there's too many people here. I don't want the people get insulted. Now I put more in front of more people now. <laughs> Who cares, right? <laughs> that's the that's about it is. So the spear is called Xing Yi Da Qiang. Xing Yi Da means big, yeah. big, right? Big, big spear. Now the question: How big is big? How big is big? In the history, Da Qiang have the standard. Da Qiang, what at least like 15, 20 feet long. You according to different style, different state, different age, different system. Very long. So you use the spear not that long, but heavier than other people's spear. You claim the Da Qiang is not a Da Qiang at all. It's just the Xing Yi spear. Second, Xing Yi spear is not as same as Xing Yi Da Qiang. It's no Xing Yi Da Qiang at all. Da Qiang is a very long spear used in the battlefield, like the in the old time Chinese battlefield, there's a group of people, okay? Right. Use arrow, the long spear, short spear, saber, whatever. They do this as a group to do the to fight. So someone use a long, long spear called Da Qiang. That's a real Da Qiang. 20, 30, minimum 18 foot long, feet long. That's Da Qiang. You use a spear like 10 feet, 8 feet at the top. It's not a Da Qiang, but you perceive the Da Qiang as a false claim. Your, your spear may be bigger than someone else's spear, but still not the Xing Yi Da Qiang. So those kind of people fall around in the in our community to hold the spear, you know, like it's a claim Xing Yi Da Qiang. That's not a, that's a false claim, scam. Yeah. Uh, scam. Oh, by, by the way, his mistake caused by his ignorance. It's, I don't think he deliberately made that mistake. Only reflect he, he, he doesn't know what he's talking about, which is okay. No. Yeah, I think maybe what was being referred to is, you know, like a standard spear wushu hype. Like yes, re- yes, re- that's Xing Yi Qiang, that's right, Qiang, that's enough. Right, right yeah. But you, the, the, the diameter, mm, the yeah. weight can be different, but you cannot say that's Xing Yi Da Qiang. Yeah. Xing Yi Da Qiang, no Xing Yi Da Qiang at all. For example, Miao Dao, I have a Miao Dao given by Gu Xiang, Miao Dao. But I, there's no Xing Yi Miao Dao. Yeah. Of course, you can practice Miao, uh, Xing Yi with the Miao Dao, but you cannot say Xing Yi Miao Dao. Right, right. Otherwise, scam. Right, yeah. Scam. Yeah. I can rifle. No Xing Yi <laughs> rifle. <laughs> right. At all, right? Yeah. Not part of the system. Yes, but you claim it's a big spear. I have a big spear now. I'm strong. No, please take a break. Relax, okay? Claim Xing Yi Qiang. Remove the word big, double big. Yeah. Right? This is a mistake. Yeah, ignorance. Yeah. yeah, I think there's a lot of common, you know, common mistakes. mistakes. People but just... how to deal with the mistakes? See, I do not, in, I do not argue with people. It's, I'm not in a position to correct anyone. But someone enjoys argument. They argue. They argue that. Well, I read that. Oh, so so so. I don't use the word funny. I don't use the word ridiculous. It's also interesting. That's it. Because, in Chinese way, we say, well, we, I, we prefer you, you know, to keep your mistake. Why do I correct you? And then you keep me saying, you're fine. And nothing to do with me. But if you spread the rumor in the, in the community, so I'm in the position to correct the mistake, right? In order to protect other people, you know, by, uh, without being, you know, in, uh, mis, mis, misled by those wrong information. Okay? Again, spear should practice at a different specific stage with a specific method. It's not to hold the big stuff that you shake your body, that kind of Xing Yi spear. No, no, no. No, that, that's not a Xing Yi spear, just a Xing Yi body shaking, maybe. No. Yes, body Xing Yi shaking. Yeah, one, right, one, yeah. one of the technique. Right, yeah. One of the technique. Right. 
So what are some other common misconceptions that get on your nerves when you see people practicing or misrepresenting Xing Yi? Is there anything that comes to mind? Why do I, if I, I saw it in the internet, why do I close the page? Yeah. And somebody send a message, no, don't send it to me, okay? I, I'm not interested. I seriously, I, don't send it to me. Please, I, I'm not interested in watch that stuff. Because I do not want to, my mind get polluted. Mm -hmm. And I want to keep myself pure. I don't want to see those kind of, uh, you know, pollutant, you know? It's very bad. It's difficult to detox even sometimes. Mm -hmm. Really bad sometimes. Bad attitude, bad practice. They focus too much on, on, on marketing. I use the word marketing too much. They work too hard on marketing. I ask them, do you have time to practice? Do you have time to teach your students? Please, you know, focus on your practice. Do not think about uh, uh, so much like marketing thing. When you are good, people recognize you, right? And your practice will be, you know, promoted by many peoples, many peoples. Like, like myself in China, many people practice Xing Yi because they saw my video. Right. But before Xing Yi have a reputation, great name, but where's a good video? Yeah, very hard. When people see the internet time, they want to see video, not a photo, not all the photo. So when people watch my video, hey, this is Xing Yi nice, and I check this. Many people started Xing because of my video. Yeah. I'm very happy to hear someone told me, oh, I learned Xing Yi because of the video. Many, many times, yeah. many times people say this, oh, I'm happy. That contribution. I'm not happy to say, hey, I have a new book not published now. The book have a lot of information. Buy my book, you'll be great. No, come on, right? Hey, right. No one will learn the stuff because of your book. Yeah. Right. Focus on, on the real stuff. Forget the marketing thing too much otherwise, you know? Yeah. yeah. But because we, you, you asked me this question, it's mentioned this question, so I just point out specific, you know, experience phenomenon uh, circulating previously. Uh, not now, I'm not pointing my finger to any specific individual at this moment, I just say based on my, my, memory, my, my memory, okay, my memory. And, um, because at my age, I have, pretty soon, maybe in the end of this year, I, I will reach the 50 years of a practice of a martial art. Because when I started, I say seven, eight, seven years, eight years, six years, but more precisely, six years old when I was started, six years old, like every day. But why I read eight? Because Chinese put one year yeah, late. Right, right. And then it should be seven by seven, not a good number. So it should be around six, seven years old. This year, soon I will reach practice of uh, 50 years. So during the 50 years of time, I have experienced many, many individual um, concept um, experience. A lot. I've seen a lot. I traveled many places in China uh, in order to practice, to study. My family, sponsored me financially and um, greatly before in order to let me to, to visit the different teachers. I normally I do not talk about this in public because it's kind of a, a taboo. I don't want people to take advantage of this situation. For example, I visited you once, okay? You live in Henan, I visited you once and uh, you were 18 years old. I was uh, 25 years old, I visited you once, stayed there one day, hmm. you happy me something. Right. According to Chinese tradition, like, the day I study with you, you'll be my father whole life. What's that? I don't like that concept. You are not my father. Right. My father, only, my mother only sleep with, sleep with one person with my father. That's, right. Don't insult me. I have many fathers. My, right. I don't have that many fathers. Second, I stay with you one day. How great you, you yeah. have to me. I don't think so. I don't think I will not perceive as my father. So I just uh, with you one day, but if I put it in public, my God, so many people will say, hey, he learned from mud, from learn like yeah, that. I understand. That's not the right. Yeah. I don't want the people misunderstand the quick way of uh, getting knowledge by a visit. Yeah. There's no way. No. Right. He's not a Jesus Christ. Right. He's not a Muhammad waking me, make me understand something so holy in the third second by pointing me. Not that the situation. Yeah. And so I, I do not talk about dating, but actually I visit a lot of people yeah. and a lot of great martial artists. A lot of, when I was, uh, you know, 20 years ago, a lot of. I traveled many areas in China, many cities, many provinces to see in north, south, different style, different practice. A lot of, because I have a 50, year, 50 years of uh, practice experience. And plus, it packed up to move, up to move to Canada. I, in the beginning, I taught martial art as my full-time job. Right. 
I, I, my studio was the St. Catherine Street, it's the center of the city, right? and it's very expensive to, to rent that studio. I have to pay the rent, so I have to, you know, manage my, 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 my teaching. And, 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 and seriously, I have to be. And, and uh, back then, I had to improve myself, not only my own practice, but also the way how I teach people. Forget to manage how to manage the studio, because that's a small thing, but how to manage teaching. Yeah. I, I, I have to I have to work very hard. I have to say the say the truth. I cannot say oh nothing, small piece of cake. Not the truth. I, I had to work very hard uh, to, to manage the teaching because I'm, uh, I'm 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 I was made in China. I was imported to Canada right. due to due to the glo globalization right. and the importation. Then after moved here, I I I I, I try different thing. I, I taught a different style, but I have to be serious. Yeah. So during this time. I, it helped me a lot to improve myself by working with other people. That's why I appreciate this society, this community so much because I got the benefit. Not only, not only I, I teach people, but also I improved myself by learning the Western way of uh, teaching and the Western way of uh, communication. In the, in the West, I learned being authentic, being straightforward, being transparent and then being yourself, I learned this concept here. It totally against the 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 not against totally. It's a not popular concept uh, in the confusion based Confucianism based community. Yeah. Uh, here I have to say what I really believe over there. Uh, be humble. Do not say this over the oh, oh, over there. Uh, here I transparent over there. No 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 no. You show something, you do something, right? That's normal. Here transparent. And uh, here you have to say very straightforward, otherwise confused. People get confused over there. No double things before you say something. So my personality even changed after moving to Canada. It's good or bad. I believe it's great to me. And uh, I have a. This is why I have. A, I tell people I know I have a different lives in in the such a shorter time because I moved to Canada. Yeah. I travel to Europe. I travel to United States. I travel to you know, uh, other areas to experience. A different culture, different language, and different cuisines, right? Different food. It's great. Yeah. But all of them due to the immigration. Yeah. Right. I come to here. So I am I'm 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 grateful. I'm, I'm very happy because of this. All of this. Yeah. Maybe I'll be talk to the topic I cover too much, but no, no. it's the way how I communicate with the people. No, it's yeah. good. It's yeah. good to hear that you had a good experience in Canada coming to Canada. Uh, great. Yeah. The Passion Montreal is great. We have it's the uh, English uh, uh, mostly English, everybody, Montreal, Quebec, it's a French culture, you know, area. And uh, we have a you know, different language, different culture, it's great. Yeah, it's very nice. Yeah, when I talk to different people, yeah. I switch myself to different cultural setting. Yeah. Right, but by, by maintaining my Chinese, you know, uh, the, 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 the idea, the insight, the, the, the knowledge, the culture, but I uh, have to, you know, learn other people's culture. Like yesterday, when you met my students, right, Carl, yeah. He's a French Canadian. You see the way he talks. Yeah. Totally different from uh, other people who is uh, from Ottawa. Yeah, uh, years later, right? Yeah. You see that different. And then you talk to me. I'm a, I'm a Chinese and the background, like I said, imported. So so totally different uh, dynamics here. Yeah, very interesting. Yeah, it's very nice. It's good. Yeah. So so hopefully we won't have uh, any technical issue. Okay. So I wanted to ask you some questions about shootout. You use the term shootout. Uh, how is that term different than, say, Nadan internal alchemy? Is it a broader term? Interesting question. In North America, when, when I read the English book about the Taoism internal practice, specifically, um, uh, we call it shootout. People use the term meditation or um, cultivation of uh, internal alchemy. The, the reason I prefer use the term show out is that originally in China, most of the time, especially from last few centuries, last few centuries, we started to use the term show out. Show means cultivate. Dao is the short term for great Dao, which reflects uh, reflect the Taoism. Because in China, internal alchemy or show out is the Taoist practice. Later on, other style of a practice such as Buddhism, uh, you know, even Confucianism, they borrow the same idea, same term to describe the similar approach. However, the level, the depth of uh, the knowledge of the practice 
in terms of uh, the systematic approach is far away from the practice of Taoism. Because I practiced, I studied all those uh, practices, Confucianism, Buddhism, Taoism, and other isms. I realized Taoism is the most well developed in terms of uh, technique, practice. And uh, so since Taoism prefer to use the term Xiu Dao, so I prefer choose this term to describe this uh, practice instead of uh, use the term meditation. Let's just take the English word meditation itself. It is uh, you know, it, it, it cannot reflect the same meaning as we used in in Xiu Dao in Taoism practice. In China, we even cannot find the term meditation in Chinese. If someone want to translate literally literally from uh, English, which is meditation to Chinese, or let's say Xiu Dao or or energy practice, it doesn't make it, it won't be able to translate directly. So why we use term meditation? Then why not use internal alchemy? Because internal alchemy, the term alchemy may mislead people. They have a different I use the word with the connotations, right? Uh, so I I I prefer use the, the term. And Xiu Dao instead of other terms. So, you, are you saying that people might read the word alchemy and, and read sort of a magical connotation into I, it? Yes, yeah. I think so. I think so. This uh, one word may carry different meaning. Yeah. Of course, people understand when people other people understand what it is. This mistake, this misunderstanding, may be avoided. However, why don't we stop this preventative at the first place? Right. Also, Xiu Dao. It's not a bad term in terms of the sound. Right, it's an imagery. So, so this is why I try, I try to use this term, which reflects original name used in China. So, what does Xu Dao encompass? I mean, I, I know the term meditation is not a perfect term, but there's a meditative aspect that Xu Dao also encompasses, like reading the scriptures, and, 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 uh, Taoist scriptures, things of that nature. Xu Dao cons is consists of uh, many activities, but based, but basically. Any activity, any practice that can calm down our mind, help us to restore our energy, and let us you know, improve our well-being, that can be considered as a Xiu Dao. It's a really broad spectrum of a practice. But if we specifically to analyze the term based on we say, traditional Taoism internal practice, that is a refine of the internal energy. When we talk about the term internal energy, it doesn't mean the energy in the body because we are part of the universe. Refining the energy is not necessarily to restrict ourselves, our mental, psychological, or energetic practice inside of the body. It can go beyond our body. It can reach spiritual level, uh, which, which, which can have a great impact on our um, I say the you use the Taoism term is a human life, or the quality of our human life. Okay, so are you talking about sort of refining yourself in a way that you can be more in tune or in harmony with your fellow human beings and your surroundings? Is that what you're talking about, or is it something more than that? I think most something more than that. According to Taoism belief, any living entity in the in the universe can be improved through practice, but. Uh, improve uh, improved uh, in terms of what about their energy level, their relationship with the universe, relationship with the society, even the relationship with ourselves. Taoism believe that we have uh, both physical body and uh, energy body. So Taoism practice the process to refine the energy body. Hopefully, our energy body will last longer than our physical body, which is the objective of a Taoism energy refinement pra uh, practice. So when people talk about immortality, that's what they're actually talking about, is the energy body. The term Im immortality has many levels of meaning. It's really difficult and challenging to define this term. If we see the, if we see the term Im uh, immortality at the face value, it, it may give people impression that someone will never die, right? Immortal immortality, 
or the practice of being immortal is immortality, which is not true according to Taoism. Taoism believe physical body can disappear. We use the word disappear. Disappear can be converted to another type of uh, uh, human being, another type of uh, format, or just uh, you know like a natural death. Right. Uh, it's a depend on your belief system. But at the same time, it is the we have another concept which is the energy body of our spirit or our mind through practice. Thousand believe that under um, under normal condition, with the physical body disappearing, our spiritual energy body will disappear at the same time. However, through practice, even though the physical body may disappear, but our energy body may last longer and will last very long if we become immortal. Different schools have different beliefs. For example, Confucianism. Confucianism believe that our spirit, our righteous spirit, is the real energy that will last very long. And so the overall practice of Confucianism in terms of meditation is to cultivate the right energy, or zheng qi. Zheng qi. This type of zheng qi is different from the same term used in TCM or in Chinese medicine. That zheng qi in TCM seems like uh, immunity, you know, mm -hmm. and uh, or defense is energy. But in in Confucianism, zheng qi means our right right righteous energy, which is the the spirit that we want to cultivate through study, through practice. Taoism use the same concept, but they go one step further. They have the specific step to cultivate to practice the energy body, which is go beyond our physical body with the specific steps instead of just a concept used in Confucianism. So all the all, all the other style com compared to Taoism are lacking of specific steps in terms of practice to reach the similar goal, if not if not uh, uh, go better. So Jiangxi in Confucianism is that is that virtue? Would you say that's a similar similar term? Can be virtue. The thing is, can virtue last longer than our physical body? That's the that's the question I has been discussed for thousand years. Yeah. That's become a question. So someone want to let's say their spirit, their energy carried by the universe or by people, then only to be a virtuous people will be enough. That's a question. Hmm. In Taoism, we we say there's a two type of practice basically. One is the xiu xing, xing means our nature. The other one xiu ming, ming means our life, or physical health. But the other one spiritual health or energetic health. So both of them should be cultivated simultaneously. However, to start which one is more important? To start which aspect among those? Those those two. This answer. Differentiate among different Taoism schools, but in the end, in the end, they both all all want to integrate both together. We call Xing Ming Shuang Xiu, cultivate Xing, which is the nature, and the Ming, which is the life, together. Shuang so practice both at the same time. This is a Taoism term. So that is the guiding principle in Taoism. This is why Taoism Taoism practice focus on physical health and. Energy health or spiritual health, both are equally important. At with as the as the as the general principle, um, some different school emphasize different aspect, but overall they focus on both. Then in the end, if if we follow the concept of Tao, then how uh, how to achieve the immortality? So this is a very profound question. Really, is not that easy to answer in a short term. It's based on the uh, personal. And experience and uh, the uh, we say the the world view all the, uh, related to the belief system. I I I perceive Taoism as a spiritual entity, as a spiritual practice and entity practice. I do not get involved with the Tao Taoist religion, even though I studied in temple. I know a lot of uh, uh, people in the Taoism with the religious Taoism community, and uh, but personally. I prefer it's uh, it's uh, it's we call, we call the practical or civil or those uh, Tao or philosophical Taoism instead of uh, religious Taoism. I'm not against in religious Taoism. Just it's very hard for me to believe like Lao Tzu as a as a wise man become a god. Okay, by the way, he was not nominated as a god at the first place. 
Right. And then it's the, the, divine, the, the, the divinity system of Taoism changed many times and they have different God and then everywhere in the kitchen have a dog, God, not a dog, sorry. Uh, at the God, you go to the forest, a uh, God, and then you go to maybe, maybe my washroom have a God also, according to Taoism belief, but I never see them. I only see the running water. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. It's okay. Yeah. So would you say that it's fair to say that this two-pronged approach that Taoism uses to uh, physical health and, and the spirit, the idea is to, that the, the better health you're in and the longer life that you lead, the more you'll be able to cultivate your energy body and your spirit. Would that be fair to say? Is that the... Yes. In Taoism, in, not only Taoism, <clears throat> according to Chinese culture, especially Buddha, uh, Confucianism, the physical health of physical body is so important because it's believed to be given by the parents right. and we have the cherished this. So physical health of, is very important in Taoism. And and Taoism, conversion against uh, suicide, you no know, mm. suicidal activity. Um, even Buddhism, Buddhism, they neglect the the importance of the physical body because they pursued of the spiritual spiritual, you know, the, the well being. But still, in Buddhism, then is never never promote suicide. Never never. It's a taboo. Also, we not allow any religion. We not encourage suicide based on my understanding, at least in in, in Chinese and the people I study. Uh, on, on, a, on a daily basis, but, but still, still, it's the, we have to clearly define what, like, come back to the beginning of the question, what is immortality? Is physical body never die, or our energy will last longer, or do we have a, no, believe in the reincarnation? Religious Taoism, many branches believe reincarnation, which is, I believe, borrowed from Buddhism, but or look Lao Tzu, Tao Te Ching, those concepts, which is a classic document um, for Taoism. It's never talk about, talk about reincarnation. Mm. You never talk about the someone can fly. The Lao Tzu in his Tao Te Ching said clearly that I cannot uh, name the person who governing the universe. So we gave a name, it is a Tao. This is Tao. If we gave it a name, it is a Tao. It's called a Tao. And the Tao is beyond, is the before the God. Because Xiang Di Zhi Xian is the seems before prior to the existence of the God, according to uh, um, Lao Tzu's original document. Of course, you can explain this and interpret this different way, but still, Lao Tzu emphasized the importance of a Tao instead of anything else. You can, you can interpret the, the term, the word Di, right, with emperor or God different way, but he emphasized the Tao. Tao means the ultimate the uh, power in the universe. So, 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 Tao is more important than religious God if we follow the original Tao the document, which is Tao Te Ching, right? Unfortunately, many people have different way to interpret this, but it's their choice. I believe, I believe uh, uh, um, the, the spiritual or practical uh, or, or energetic practice in Taoism is the right way for most people, for most of people. Right? They have, have to say this. Do you consider things like Qigong or even uh, what some people term internal martial arts to be a part of the practice of refining your energy? I don't think so. Okay. It's not the same level. It's not the same. Of course, any activity used to aim, aim, aiming for refining energy can be considered as a Taoism practice. However, when we talk about specific Taoism energy practice or, or, the, or the, the internal alchemy practice, which is the older term, it's in, internal martial art or qigong do not have the same benefit because it's the thousand uh, the internal alchemy is the reverse flow of activity okay. martial art any move is ex, it's mm. out ex, external right this kind of activity of course have internal but not at the pure the internal practice qigong is a dynamic stage it's not the from the like like a like the the xiu dao which is the it's a, it's a static plate, but I perceive Qigong can be a preparation of a internal alchemy practice. This is why Qigong can be part of the Xiu Dao. If we talk about the practice, instead of talking about the benefit or pursuit of uh, you know, the, the objective or, our, or the, the motivation behind the practice. So that, they are different things. So my conclusion is that Qigong should be part of the Xiu Dao, but as a preparation for internal alchemy practice. Oh, Shu Dao practice. So what is the basic practice of Shu Dao? Is there a basic practice, like a beginning step that people would take when they start studying like this? There are two things people should do. First of all, study the theory. 
Without understanding theory, shoot out will not go too far. Second, they have to practice. Practice means calm down the mind and get get the body of our mind into a specific state, and then wait for the energy its energy or uh, energy phenomenon happen. That's called pre primordial practice or primordial practice, depending which term we use. That's the original, is the authentic, traditional old way of the Taoism practice. Any practice, any active activity aiming to achieve the same goal but by, the, by using dynamic approach such as strong visualization or physical pulsar movement against the principle of a thousand practice if we talk about the in specifically it's the, the internal alchemy that's the major differentiator between the right one and the wrong one it's not I it's not I said this you read all the old document talk about this plus more importantly, Taoism internal alchemy or Xiu Dao is about to refine our what we call the vital energy, refine our primordial energy. At the primordial state, it is beyond our postmodal mind to control this. So we should feed our spirit, feed our spiritual body by studying, understanding those Taoist classics. Technically, then when the time ready, it will work naturally by themselves without our personal specific intervention in the process of uh, refining of the primordial energy. There's a two stage primordial and the post module. Any intended practice we applied, a technique or skill is a, a part of the post module. We want to enter the prime uh, prime module. So at this stage, it's beyond our in, uh, intervention. So we have to make sure our spirit, our energy is ready to work automatically and naturally when things happen. So you're, when you say postmortal, are you talking about your acquired beliefs and emotions and intents polluting the, the practice, the, the, the primordial energy? Is that what you're talking about? It's not that, that's not such a negative uh, uh, way to explain this about the Post module. Post module is just our normal function of, of a human being. It doesn't mean to be polluted. Some schools say, oh, yeah, polluted, you have to purify yourself. Hey, like, a, like some, uh, some group, they're doing this, right? Yeah. Maybe you had a, had a certain fee. And uh, it doesn't not an answer. for you purify yourself because of energy. It's no bad energy. Good energy is energy. And then the post module is our normal daily function. Prime mode is something can be converted to. Uh, post module and can be strengthened through practice. This is why we call it the reverse flow of activity. It's the definition of uh, refine the energy from the post module to prime module, or even strengthen the prime module itself. I'm assuming this would be difficult, if not impossible, to do without a teacher as far as the actual practice. Would you say that would be correct? Very difficult. Yeah. Very difficult. It's uh, Right, uh, I have to say that that after uh, when I came to Canada in the beginning, I I I, I, I tried to find some good English book about uh, talking about this in order to help myself to learn English, and I I didn't know where to buy books at the time. I even as a, as a imported from China, I even didn't know where the bookstore in Montreal is. So so I didn't know there's a pub, big public library, right? I, I didn't know. So I tried to find online information. Later on, some students lent me some book they purchased uh, somewhere about different, uh, you know, thousand books. Some of them are, are okay, but most of the books are wrong. Back then, there's no Google translation, but they tried even worse than Google translation yeah. back then. I think Google translation can be improved with technology improvement, but Human translation may not as good as uh, Google translation, I think, sometimes. Why? Because very often people do not make progress, but the technology makes progress, like AI now. And uh, so but back then, I didn't see a lot of uh, good Taoism translation books. So I gave up reading English book. I, I have some English book. It's very new because I don't open this. I, people give me a gift. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I like it. Put my bookshelf look good. Look, I'm educated. Yeah, I have yeah, an English book, right? Nice. But at the same time, I, I don't read them. And uh, now I found, I, I saw some nice document available in the Amazon, in the market now. But if you want to ask me name that I don't remember because I only scanned a couple of pages when people ask my opinion. I thought it's very nice. 
And uh, so, so improving overall understanding of the community is improving. Uh, that's that's good point. At the same time, uh, an, another potential issue I see now, uh, Daoism, those kind of practice become a very, very commercial. Yeah. Has been commercialized, which is great. It's, uh, you see, those teachers are allowed to make 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 a living. It's great. They should make good living. However, do not exaggerate the, um, their knowledge, their function, their understanding. Okay, They are not the representative of the so-called God. Right. Is that the teacher? Right. They are not reincarnated by Lao Tzu or by someone. So you just give people explanation, help you make progress, help you understand the document, that's good enough. You are, you are not embodied you know, and, uh, by the, you know, some uh, divine power, if there exists. So it, it's my, my opinion. And, and, uh, and uh, I, I don't want to you know, mention too much, otherwise, again, politically incorrectness may happen. Yeah. 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 Nothing wrong with that, necessarily. Yeah. Thank Please, you. Yeah. welcome. It's good tea. Yeah, welcome. So difficult for somebody to get started even on their own with materials in, in the English language then, would you say? I, I need some guidance yeah, need some to guidance. understand this. Yeah. I have a lot of uh, video to demystify this yeah. plant thousand yeah. practice, the, the short practice. I have, I don't know, 16 videos so far. I will make yeah. more, maybe in, in eventually become a book or right? publish yeah. some book and uh, improve the quality and then, you know, share with people. I, I, I have no idea that how to publish a book. But I will learn. You know, I'm, I start to ask around, and, uh, and uh, I, I try to you know provide more, offer more help to people who are interested uh, in the community. And, uh, yeah, I appreciate it. Yeah, thank it you. Sounds good. It gives us something to look forward to. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. More tea. Oh, please, no, no, please. Thank you. Good tea. Is this tea have the pine tree flavor? It's very good. Yes, it's just leaf, tree leaf. That's just tea. It's not, nothing else, but it's uh, the way how they ferm ferment the fermentation process. Interesting. So let's look, talk a little bit about Dowie, Dallas Arts Organization International. Yes. Since that's the channel we're doing this for. Um, something that I want to ask so that people understand it, because I don't think we've ever talked about this before uh, in a video, is Dowie is kind of a play on words. You, you talked about how... The Dali sort of sounds like Taoist art. Is that is that what you said? It, originally, I thought that well, Dao Yi, right? D A O I. It's a nice name, Dao Yi. Dao D A O I. It's like Apple, right? iPhone, iMac. Right. I mean, yeah, yeah. Why not? I right? Why not I and Dao Yi? We put it the other way. At the same time, Dao. I, I then I later realized well, the term Dao can be go beyond the Taoist. We use the word Taoist, right, to 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 indicate this. Uh, it's uh, uh, mainly from China, it's uh, all the practice, and, but we can go beyond this. In the beginning, we said, well, Dao Yi, we should interview people in their internal styles, but later we found out any other style, which if we have similar common ground, right, we, should, we should work on, we should make a connect uh, with, uh, communication with uh, those practitioners. So gradually we interviewed the, like, some style like Ba Ji in the future even more. Uh, the, the, the thing is, the objective, the function, and uh, obviously our mission of Dao Yi should go beyond is the name itself. Even though Dao Yi can be explained as the Dao's uh, interna uh, international organization, but we should, like I said, go beyond this name. I hope in the future we will work with uh, more practitioners to create uh, something together. Right now, so far, how many interviews we have made? I think 40, 30, 40 something. 40 something, but we have a lot of interviews already made waiting right. uh, to, to, to upload, to release. Um, it, my, 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 my understanding is if one day, when we reach, let's say, 100 or even more of uh, people then uh, contributed their knowledge uh, as in the interview or presentation format, then we'll be able to organize some other activities such as maybe teaching or seminar, right, online or in person. We can do many things, but nothing can be done without the support and the help of the community. So from the beginning of the creation of the Dao Yi, we work together, we keep this as our, our mission, our vision of our culture, right, to work on this. Uh, this this is why that we never never promote 
ourselves individual, even though many of us right, have uh, our teaching career. But because Dao Yi is a platform, is organization, is the is the uh, a, a community for everyone, for other people. Like for for example, like today, um, Bill, you come to Montreal, you practice with me, which is great. But at the same time, then some some of my students say, why do not you have an interview, you know, uh, with Bill with you because he's he look he he interview now the skill very good. So I said, well, you know, I, in the beginning I said it's a good idea or not because if I have my own interview, it seems we promote ourselves. Then my students say, it's not that you promote yourself, you should let the people know what you believe and what your practice. It's not that you provide great information or valuable information or useful information, then people would be happy. So why not? Right? So they say, even said they should not refuse to avoid any great contribution because you are part of Dao Yi. So, so since of since those kind of uh, you know the the, the reason, so I we work together you know to make this uh, you know I don't use the word interview. We say discussion, discussion, communication, make this happen. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm very happy to to talk about you know a lot of uh, different uh, uh, story which I learned before. I use the word story because make this like more casual. Uh, I I'm not that serious person in 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 communication in sharing the knowledge, but the, my attitude to knowledge itself is uh, super serious. Mm -hmm. and, uh, I try not to uh, offend anybody because, don't forget, English is not my first language, and, uh, and um, I try to you know, express myself clearly and, uh, so that mis misunderstanding will be, maximi will be avoided and, and as much as we can. It's uh, my objective. Yeah, I'm glad we could have the discussion because you know I wanted to let everybody know that it did take us a very long time as a team to get you to agree to have the discussion. Yeah, yeah. Be because it's hard. I, 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 like I'm very careful to, to say we'll give other people opportunity to yeah. talk. Yeah. We have a lot of uh, teachers are coming. You know, <coughs> right now we have a lot of other teachers are ready yeah. to have an interview. You know, in the pipeline of our the yeah. schedule. Uh, again, like I said in the beginning, that when we reach 100. Of uh, you know episode, we will have a uh, uh, considerable right as uh, members in our community contribute their knowledge. Then we can move to the next step. Hopefully, we can organize some activities together. That'd be great. Yeah, we got some interesting things coming up. I think. Yes. Yes. And I think there are people in the community must have really felt that there was a need for something like this because really no one has turned us down that we've asked for an interview. You know, as soon as we ask people, they, they've gotten been really nice. I wanted to talk. I wanted to um, connect with each other and, and, and promote their art and promote each other in the community. And it's been very nice. It's just yes. a lot of cooperation. Yes, because it's, like I said, without the community support, Dao Yi can do nothing. Nothing can be done. Uh, I uh, unfortunately I do not have a lot of contact in North America in the community. But back to China, I have a lot of contact. Later on, I will find a, we will find a solution to invite some uh, you know um, um, teachers from China to share information with us. We have overcome the challenge caused by linguistic or culture or time different those kind of uh, issue. We because we want to provide high quality, informative, uh, uh, valuable. Uh, episode or, or the, the the videos or the, the program to our audience, and uh, hopefully things will happen faster. Yeah, I hope so. That's something we're looking forward to is interviewing people from China and other places like that. But I think so far we've we've interviewed teachers from let's see United States, Canada, Japan, yes, Japan. Uh, um, Germany, yes. England, um, Malaysia. Yes, Malaysia. Yeah, yes, yeah, yeah. and many, South, many, South, South, South yeah, America. Yeah, yes, yeah, South America. Yeah. Yes, yeah. Uh, it's the uh, we we make the we 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 really you know um, apply um, the concept of uh, diversity, diversity of background, diversity of the uh, style, diversity of uh, belief belief system, diversity of uh, their personal experience. We do not censor any message, any information. Uh, contributed by those uh, our uh, committee members, and uh, we do our best to avoid this those kind of uh, um, issues. I right? do our best, but and like I said, our interview, our interviewee has their right to speak out their belief. 
So we just uh, no plat uh, offer the platform, and uh, we org organize their, the, 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 the information in the video format. So we share with the community. Yeah, up to this point, we haven't really done any editing at all. We just have a conversation yes. and let people say what they want to yes. say, and it's turned out really well. Everybody's been behaving themselves very nice. By the way, this video may have to edit for a couple of times because of the technical issue. Technical issue. Okay. So you spend a lot of time uh, making YouTube videos, educating people about various subjects. You have your shootout videos. You talked about tea, Tao Te Ching, uh, Xingyi, Bagua, Tai Chi, lots of other things too. Uh, but you also teach online, is that right? Yes. I, I never stopped teaching after I moved to Mantra, even during the, the COVID-19 time. I have a lot of people study with me online, even in person. Especially in the summertime, I, I, I teach many students and uh, I enjoy this. But for years ago, I uh, I started to design a, a fully uh, function. I, my objective is to have an online teaching system ready. The issue is I still found still don't feel very confident of that uh, platform because I want to make this uh, you know, have a better benefit. Let the students, let those users really achieve a, a re good result. I'm still working on this. I hope this summer I should get this done. I hope. And uh, besides that, I have other professional obligations. I have other jobs to do. I have other projects, not only martial arts. Martial arts is part of my life and is my life, but it's part of my life. And right now, the reason I pro provide a lot of uh, those kind of uh, information to the community is to build a foundation. Yeah. It's a build foundation. By what um, through what I'm doing, I believe a strong foundation, especially the historical, cultural, history, uh, uh, foundation can be very strong if the uh, the the other uh, community members follow uh, my per, my those program. But later on, when I have a specific teaching program, I think those people who follow those program can make progress very very fast because the idea understanding already uh, already set. So the key is to lay the foundation. Yes, yes. Uh, I, I, I believe that the benefits come from the practice. Right. But to, have, to practice well, we need to understand what, what, what we should practice. Or what's the reason, what the theory behind the physical movement. Uh, I have been, have been posting more than 200 videos. And I have never stopped for a week, no matter how busy. Yeah. And, uh, and I am, and, uh, and everything is going well, but I have next step, I have to make online teaching ready. Yeah. That's my next uh, step. I will work on this. Hopefully, I will get everything done this, uh, this summer. That would be great. I know that I first saw your videos on YouTube a long time ago, many, many years ago, but they were short, they were shorter videos, and yes. um, then during the pandemic, you started doing much longer videos, so yes. much information that it's hard, hard to keep up. So there's a ton of information on there for people to look at. Alrighty, I calculated the, the script because YouTube generated the script automatically. I downloaded the script, I compared to the, the script I used before. I realized that there are minimum, there's 600,000 words of a script already. Uh, those material can be a great source of uh, information for future generation of the practitioner. Uh, many teachers actually right now are using my material in their teaching. I know about it. They, I receive email from a lot of people. They say, thank you. I'm using your material, which episode uh, in my teaching. And I, I really feel feel happy to, to see that, to know about this. As long as I can see my material can be used by the community, that's my great honor. Yeah, that, that is a... It's a testimony for sure. I one of the vi some of the videos that I really like on your channel are the I forget how you term it the returning the the mm. art to China videos, oh. the ones that are in Chinese. That's only small part of this. There's only a few. For the last twenty years, I put tons of material in China. It brings it has brought a lot of uh, satisfaction and uh, good feedback to me, but at the same time cause a lot of trouble for me as well. You know this, I provide free information. People take one, someone in China, they teach martial art as their career, as their source of a major income. Even they are my friend, then eventually many of them become my, I do not worst enemy, but become, uh, you know, some people really 
right? Don't like me, yeah. right? I, I, I have no choice. So sometimes you have to make decision between your personal benefit or the well be the overall the community's the benefit. I chose the second one instead of my personal benefit. I provide free information. It's nothing wrong. Right. It's my duty to return the knowledge and practice to China. I believe to Hebei style, I'm the one who improved the style, not only carries the but also improved the style. I say this publicly, and many people say this in China also. Yeah. It's not I say it by myself, it's the people said it first, then oh I really like oh it's true. So I called what people say this. At the same time, of course, someone are not happy. They even harass my, my family, you know, harass myself, make a lot of rumor about me. They 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 say nonsense, ridiculous joke. Even they, they take a photo, send people to take a photo in front of my house. <laughs> they, they, they they found where my employer, they, they even harass them, a lot of things. When you touch people's what the word cheese, right? Oh their source of income, people will become upset. Yeah. There's no more. I, I say, well, I what I'm doing is I decided to take this path, so I have to be able to take the any consequence caused resulted by my action. And I do not use the word jealousy, whatever, because it is pure jealousy. But when you reach a person level, that's their determination. Let them do what they want to do. I still keep going. Like you mentioned that those, uh, I don't know, 10 many episodes about return prior to China. That's only small part of this, small, small, tiny part of this. For so many, I contribute a lot. Articles, hundreds of articles. Yeah. I promote some teachers in China because many of them do not know how to write. So I wrote article for them, for them to publish an article or a magazine or online to promote them. You know what happened in the end? Some of them against me. Mm. Even I, I have them to write article for them. It's the nature of life. It's what it is, human nature. So I do not talk about it too much. Let's focus on the positive thing. Well, that wraps up this first in installation of interviews with Master Hai Yang. I hope that you enjoyed it. Um, please let us know what you thought of the interview, and we'll see you next time. Thanks.